Hello, I'm Dr Andy Barmer, Senior Lecturer in Sociology at the University of Manchester and a member of the Morgan Centre for Research into Everyday Lives. This is my presentation for the BSA Conference 2021, Painting with Data, Alternative Aesthetics of Qualitative Research. Qualitative research is an aesthetic practice. Whether on paper or on computer screens, qualitative researchers are mostly engaged in grouping and ordering, selecting and filtering black text on white backgrounds. We carve our transcripts up into new texts, making more black and white shapes, into writing that has a certain rhythm, a certain orderliness in the presentation of its data. In a well-known and excellent guide to qualitative research, Richards explains that coding processes are the filing techniques by which we sort everyday information and ensure access to everything about a topic. Qualitative researchers code in order to get past the data record to a category and to work with all the data segments about the category. In these processes, we are guided by an aesthetic which prizes a particular scheme of taste in the translation and organisation of life rendered in a monochromatic palette. It is part of how we analyse, of how we see transcripts. This aesthetic has rarely been recognised in, in our approach to transcripts, and even rarer still have we sought to experiment with it. In this paper, I experiment with an aesthetic of transcript analysis inspired by processes of painting on and illustrating text used by the artist Thomas Phillips. Specifically, I report on the use of paint, paper, pens and pencils in the analysis of reworking transcribed qualitative interview data. The key to the method I used was to return to the participants whom I'd already interviewed, taking with me transcripts of those initial encounters and, in the simplest way of putting it, asking them to paint on the pages. The data under consideration in this paper come from a broader project on how carers of people living with dementia navigate changes in their everyday lives. My interest in a potential of a methodology which highlighted the more conceptual sense of painting with data began with a literal experience of watercolour paint, as Lynn Chapman, artist, illustrator and urban sketcher, took up residence in the Morgan Centre where I work. In one of our sessions with Lynn, she introduced us to the idea of humiliments paintings or sketches layered on top of existing pages of printing of printed text. These are best represented by Thomas Phillips' book, uh, A Human A Humument, uh, a contraction of the title of another book, A Human Document. Here you can see some of the examples uh, of humiments from the Morgan Centre workshop, which Lynn led. Taking humiments as a point of inspiration, I returned to my participants, uh, taking with me transcripts of, of sections of our previous interviews and invited them to paint on the pages. Although it's not unheard of for researchers to share transcripts with participants, it's still quite unusual in social research and even less common to share other participants' transcripts as well. So it was with a little hesitation that I engaged in allowing people to choose work with their own interview data or with data that might come from someone else and convey different stories to theirs. With regard to options for painting, uh, I gave participants a big box of tools, including things like watercolours, pencils, wax crayons, pastels and various other bits and bobs that will be familiar to you from sketching. I gave them very little steer in what to do, but I did show them an example of a humiment from our workshop with Lynn to provide them with one option. And participants therefore engaged in a range of different approaches and produced a range of different kinds of painted pages. But naturally, many of them did take on, uh, even if only partly, the, the humiment style. Adapting Mason's concept of layering from her book Affinities, I want to offer the broad concept of layering as a key analytical tool in the use of this method of painting with data as an alternative aesthetic for textual analysis. In Mason's work, layering refers to a process of argument and tries to move away from traditional efforts to encapsulate Instead, it seeks to produce a sort of cumulative picture 
layering together flashes of insights and moments of analytical revelation on top of each other so that no layer of the argument or analysis captures the others and such that each is mixed in with each. I adapt Mason's concept here to highlight three processes um, or analytical pains through which to view the work that care is engaged in when painting with data. I use these to move away from what I think are three key dimensions of traditional qualitative textual work, namely addition as a concept to move away from extraction, juxtaposition as a concept here to move away from thematization and collaging as a concept to move away from ordering. Uh, in this talk, I'm just going to look at the first two. Layering on addition. In this picture, Mark, a carer of his stepmother, who had passed away at this time, reworked his own transcripts and painted in a rainbow palette. He used watercolour paints to create a representation of a human brain, beautifully washed over the transcribed data from our previous encounter. Mark's brainbow, if you like, layers on a level of additional meaning and interpretation. He chose to work with a page in which he told me about a claim he attributed to Carl Jung, that the first half of life is about acquiring things and establishing things and achieving things, and the second part of life is about letting go of that. Thinking back to his interview, he wanted to highlight that when we talk about dementia, we are too often talking about a brain that seemed to be failing unnaturally. But once thought about in Jung's terms, the brain of someone with dementia was beautiful to Mark, for it followed the grand scheme of life which we could learn to embrace in order to live more healthily. Reworking the whole of his previous interview via the single page in front of him, Mark therefore added the idea of a healthy and natural body with dementia into his account through treating the page as a kind of synecdoche, and by doing so spoke also to the broader social discourse of illness that he was embroiled in. Here, the materials themselves allowed for the page to become literally multi-layered, so that the black text came into dialogue with splashes of colour, letters of talk about dementia merged with shapes of brains and rainbows, with circles and lines of pen, with big evocative sweeps of blue and orange and green. The materiality of the transcript was opened up for transformation, and with it the contents of the text on the page. In this material form, therefore, participants helped me to develop alternative ways of analysing by generating alternative modes of text being materials, i.e. as more than black text on white background, producing vantage points from which I might otherwise have been unable to see. Layering life juxtaposition. In this picture, Erica, a participant who took data from another person's interview, selected a page of talk about religion and faith. She pulled together a selection of pastels in what seemed a quite beautiful palette of plum, blue, orange and lemon. But this contrasted immediately with the ferocity of her sketching. Erica physically worked the page close to tearing, her body bowing over and her arm determinedly driving the pastels across the page, her hands and arms zipping across the paper, her wrists turning and spinning, arcing and stretching to produce the effects of movement that leap out from this picture. The key phrases she's highlighted, you think certain things at certain times, going round in her head. These phrases led me as I silently watched her work to expect a theme about thinking, belief or memory that would extend what the text was already discussing. However, her bodily movements sat uncomfortably with that and I began to suspect that something else was in creation. As she explained her choice of colours, it was clear that the physical process in which she'd been engaged and the selection of pigments, their layering, depth and movement spoke more than did the words she'd circled. Erica had chosen instead to bring the flesh back into the text by use of colours that she daily encountered in the bruises on her mother's arms and legs, from falls, from struggles and from ageing. Erica used the startlingly physical way that she applied the layer of pigment to reflect her feelings of sadness and anger at the way her mother's body had changed. 
allowing her to emphasise the pain and rage of loss that was being archived daily in her mother's skin and to weave into the transcripts page of issues pertaining to thought and mind the physicality of dementia and older age. Erica's physical movements in combination with the styles of expression on the page become a moment of embodied reading of the text she is painting upon. It shows up what is missing in the page, the sensory, the life of dementia and care, the effort and exhaustion, the emotion, the feeling of living. It's what Mason terms a kinesthetic sensory experience or a potent connection. Between Erica, the page, the paint, me and the author of the talk in the transcript. The painting with data method is not simply important, therefore, because of the paint on the data, but because of the painting, the actual material style of analysis, which the method makes possible. Painting being a particular kind of embodied practice lent movement, space, strength and feeling, form, not simply to the data production process, but to the interpretive analytical process of working with transcripts. At the heart of Mason's approach is a concern with affinities or, or potent connections, as she puts it, that seem otherworldly and boundless, yet we know, glimpse and touch them through the parochial aperture of our personal lives. To know such potent connections sociologically, Mason advises that where conventional sociology has wanted to split and categorise human activity in the in, into individuals, groups and society, into variables, typologies, structures, systems, processes, discourses, practices or whatever. An affinities approach seeks out and explores connections, entanglements, energies, forces and flows involved in the living world. The painting with data aesthetic can help answer this call. It offers an evocative form and a conceptual schema through which to interpret it providing a route to novel insights that enlivens the interpretive work of the analyst by offering opportunities to make and witness such potent connections. It's surely not the only means to producing such insights, but in its specificity, it points to a broader, tantalising possibility for the social sciences, that there might be any number of alternative aesthetics that we might adopt, adapt, generate and experiment with to direct our interpretive analytical work. Painting with data allowed layers of life to be woven into the interpretation and analysis process. The spiritual, beautiful, affective and physical all found representation within the pages participants produced and in their kinesthetic engagement in the painting process itself. These phenomena are, I note, all things which are often difficult to express in talk, suggesting that the specific form of intertextual embodied analysis made possible when painting with data is especially amenable to folding in and bringing out these ineffable elements of life. Why should we expect black and white text and the associated textual processes of extraction, thematization, ordering and so forth to be a singularly adequate form through which to understand and express the so many varied sensations and emanations of living. Painting with data exemplifies a latent and powerful potential within our existing methods for radically transforming how we work with our materials by generating alternative aesthetics for qualitative analysis. <laughs>